On one summer night, I was celebrating my 22nd birthday with some friends. I knew I had drunk a little too much, but I ignored it and made up my mind to go home on my own because it was just a 10 minute walk. I struggled with my keys as I stumbled down the walkway while trying hard to maintain my balance. I noticed a shadowy figure heading my way as I got closer to the front door of my house. It was getting pretty dark now, so even though I squinted to get a better look, I had trouble recognizing the shadowy figure. I finally realized who it was. It was my 55-year-old neighbor, who lives two doors down. He smiled at me, and he walked over, and I returned the gesture by smiling back. But as he drew nearer, I caught a glimpse of something strange in his look. He was constantly grinning at me in an odd way. He might have noticed me stumbling, and was obviously attempting to take advantage of my altered state. Suddenly, he approached me and gave me a hug. It felt really uncomfortable, but I assumed it was just a friendly gesture, and didn't immediately push him off. But then he asked if he could come inside and have a beer to celebrate more appropriately. I had no idea how he knew it was my birthday, because I had never told him. I felt uneasy and tried to hurry off but he persisted, refusing to take no for an answer. He grabbed my shoulders and tried convincing me to open the door. I realized that I needed to get away from him, but I didn't want to provoke him, so I decided to pretend that I didn't have my house keys. I walked a little bit off to the side, pretending to call someone who might have my keys, but in reality, I called my cousin, who lived nearby, and told him how freaked out I was and what was going on. He said he was on his way and will be there in a minute. As I waited for my cousin to arrive, I could feel the neighbor's eyes on me, watching my every move. I felt a shiver run down my spine, and I tried walking farther away from him, but in the most natural way possible. When my cousin arrived, he asked my neighbor to leave me alone and pretended that he won't give me the keys till the guy leaves. He gave my cousin a cold stare, but then left. I quickly grabbed my keys and ran inside, relieved to be away from the creepy neighbor. But the relief was short-lived. The next day, I discovered that my two dogs, who had been outside in the backyard all night, had been poisoned. I was devastated, and I knew immediately that it was the neighbor who had done it out of pure pettiness. From that day on, I never looked at my neighbor the same way again. I wanted to call the cops on him. But since I had no proof of the harassment or the fact that he poisoned my dogs, there wasn't much I could do, but I always made sure to keep my distance. My name is Samantha. My friends call me Sam. I used to live in a small little apartment with my two best friends, Amy and Sarah. We were all in our early 20s and had just moved to this new city, so we were excited to explore and meet new people. Little did we know that one of our neighbors would become our worst nightmare. All three of us left for work at the same time in the morning and returned home almost together in the evening. Everything was going pretty great until one day, we came home to find a bouquet of three roses on our doorstep. It was a strange gesture but we didn't think much of it at first. That was until we read the note that accompanied the flowers. It was from our neighbor, a twice arrested sex offender, and it read, three blooming roses for three fragrant ladies in full bloom. We were all instantly creeped out. In full bloom? What sort of remark is this? After that, we started noticing the same neighbor lurking around our building more often. Sometimes, he would even stand outside our door and leave things like chocolates. It was like he was obsessed with us, and we didn't know what to do. Amy was pretty furious, so she decided to go to his house and let him know that what he was doing is creeping us out. To our surprise, when Amy came back, she said that the guy said sorry. We were glad it was finally over, but after that night, things only got worse. He started leaving notes on our door, sending us creepy messages, and even started following us around the block. 
he started leaving huge flower bouquets on our door, which sometimes read, I'm sorry, and sometimes had, I love you notes attached. We were terrified and we didn't know what to do. We called the police, but they said there wasn't much they could do unless he had physically harmed us or had tried breaking in. This was disappointing because living in that apartment now meant waking up in fear every single day. It felt like his eyes were always on the three of us. Even in our own apartment, we felt unsafe. We even put up double locks on all our windows and on the front door. It wasn't until we found out that he had a history of violence that we decided to move out. We didn't want to take any chances, and we already felt uneasy enough every single day. We packed up our things and left in the middle of the night. To this day, I still get chills thinking about that neighbor and what could have happened if we hadn't gotten out when we did, and what more could he have done to terrorize us and stalk us. My name is Jojo. It was just another regular night for me and my son, as we had just walked up to the front door of our house and locked it. Then I asked my son to go take a shower, then dinner will be ready. Everything was pretty normal until something caught my eye on the Ring doorbell camera. I saw a man outside, but we had no idea who he was. My heart was pounding as I watched the footage which showed that the man had been following me and my son to the front door of our house. I had no idea he was behind us, but luckily, I managed to close and lock the door just in time. As I watched in horror, the camera captured the moment the man attempted to open the door. My breath caught in my throat as he appeared to stare eerily into the peephole, trying to see inside. It was like he was trying to get in. Then he had began banging on the door. I yelled at him to go away, my voice shaking with fear. But the expressionless stranger remained outside. His blank stare chilled me to the bone. I had no idea what he was capable of, but I knew it couldn't be good. He then stared into the camera and again violently started twisting the doorknob. I thought about calling the police, but I was frozen with fear. What if he broke in before they arrived? What if he had a weapon? I knew I had to protect my son and myself. The man slowly backed away from the door, but he didn't leave. He just stood there, lurking outside my home, watching us. I couldn't shake the feeling that he was waiting for the right moment to strike. And he kept standing there, staring blankly for about 15 minutes. Those 15 minutes felt like an eternity to me. Looking back at the footage, I realized just how close we had come to a tragedy. I shuddered to think of what might have happened if I hadn't locked the door in time. The man's disturbing actions and blank stare made it clear that he had some horrible intentions. I couldn't stop thinking about the incident, and it left me with a deep sense of unease. Every time I walked out my front door, I wondered if he was still out there, watching me, waiting to pounce. And after that night, I always make sure to lock my front door, because even a few seconds of negligence can cost you your life. Thanks for watching. For more true horror stories, make sure to hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon so you don't miss a single one of our updates.